you have, actually know how many costume changes you have in this movie? It's north of 50, I think. Is it really? Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah. Is there ever, uh, there's no repeat costume, right? You have something different in every scene, I believe. Yeah, you do. There's, 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 you, there's little things that might crop up repeatedly, but not a, not a great deal. I think I retain my troubadour boots for the scene afterwards at Mama Cass's. Okay. I think I just, Julian and I figured, they're fabulous Those boots. The ones <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, no, no, everything's... Everything's pretty, pretty, pretty uh, individual. I love the way that you were able to strip away elements of them. Each yes, time. it's a sort of a kind of a motif foot kind of you know um, shedding shedding all the apparel and, and and getting back to your authentic self. Do you have a number of the actual costume changes Elton goes through over the course of this movie? That's a really good question. I I don't know the answer to that. I've written it's got to be upwards of forty. I would am I don't wonder. <laughs> I got I'll have to ask Julian. Now, Julian the Julian Day, the costume designer, will absolutely know that number. Right. I'll have to ask him. Taron guessed north of 50. So. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, um, Yeah. look, he came in every day. He had to wear something different. Look, he was in 60 days, minimum. So I would say 50 was probably a good guess. Oh, that's amazing. Why are you still something flashy? Can you even play the piano in those? Let him know who you are. You are part of one of the most beautiful scenes in this movie, which is the creation of your song. Um, uh, what do you remember about filming that scene? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it was just, it, it was it was a really special day. And Taryn was, you know, just playing the piano and, and it was him singing. He wasn't, it wasn't queuing up to any track. Right. And, um, and I remember also seeing Jamie and just watching Jamie listening to him it was just like oh my gosh his eye, his eyes were so beautiful <laughs> and um and i remember uh, with one of the actors we were we were joking and he was like i will never look like that on the screen i was like it's the lighting it's all <laughs> the lighting <laughs> But, yeah, it was more than the lighting. <laughs> yeah, it certainly was. And it's a little bit funny, this feeling inside. Did you notice how um, biographical Elton's lyrics were prior to this? No, I've kind of, I've, I've listened to the songs I knew kind of throughout this film and, and seen different interpretations of what we've done with each kind of song on the screen has been quite interesting. You, you hear them differently. Right, I saw you coming in and uh, singing. Benny and the Jets. Uh, yeah, I was probably saying a bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> Do they, are they just like, even just for the trailers They're and still prepping in my for head. this? Yeah, they've been in my head solidly. I mean, I've always liked Elton's music, but the past year I've been really immersed in it, and so there, there's still songs that, that I love. I mean, they don't get old. Do they change your opinions of them? Um, getting to know him has changed my opinions of the songs, I suppose. Mm -hmm. You know, um, just a little bit, little details and, and just bits of kind of love because he's just all about love and you kind of really you know it from his songs and knowing him a little bit you kind of get to know it even more just the autobiographical nature of his lyrics too did that dictate what songs got big numbers like what what songs of his led to no big no because I, I i understand what you mean but I, I i used songs where they were right if that makes sense you know i want love is a huge number it's you know in terms of, of what it is in this incredible video of robert downey jr just walking through a house in one shot but I, I i used it as a family opening their hearts around a table where there's love there but they're all kind of missing it and 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 it becomes quite sort of domestic but it's a really big emotional beat in the film and, and it really gives us a uh, a window into who Elton is fundamentally, uh, and um, so I used the songs where where they were the right songs to use. Saturday Night and Right for a Fight just grew and grew and grew, and it, it has to become big. And um, Rocket Man is much more considered and actually quite lonely and isolating, although it ends in this extraordinary thing about someone right. blowing up. Right, you know. right, right. Did you struggle to connect to playing a parent who's not supportive of their child? Yes, yeah. Yeah, I not only struggled to connect, I questioned it a lot because um, I also wasn't about to portray a woman 
um, who who was a parent it, who's deceased in in a way that that wrongs her, mm. you know. Um, mm. So I had a lot of confidential conversations, mm. and again and again and again, heard stories um, where I realized that it was actually worse oh, really? than than it was on the page. Mm. And I mean, it was an incredibly toxic, dysfunctional relationship. It breaks my heart. I know, it's it really sad. But look at the art that comes from it. Yeah, right? well, he was able to he was able to overcome that. I mean, I feel like he 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 had that gift within him always. Mm. And for me, I'm I'm still like, gosh, what could it have been if she hadn't have treated him like that, you know, True. what more? I mean, he it, it, he always would have been extraordinary, but he would have been happier earlier. Yeah, true. What did you say your name was again? My name is... Reggie! Reginald Dwight. I just hope you realize you're choosing a life of being alone forever. The one bit that I loved, too, was the frame story of the rehab, which I thought was a fantastic way to get into him. Was, right. that, was that always the structure? And did you shoot all those at the same time? Uh, well, we shot them in one block, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and it was, it, I've always maintained, you know, what we, what, the, the story we see of, of, of his life is a byproduct of what happens in rehab. The movie actually happens in rehab. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's where the arc is, that's where the, the growth is. And um, we did shoot them all at once. We came back and reshot some bits because obviously Alton is our guide, he's our storyteller. And I, you know, we called him the man in orange. You know, the man in orange is the guide. And so we, we did go back and find some new moments because it became increasingly apparent how important all of that was. Right. And it's and it was always in the script. It's Lee Hall. It's, it's, a, it's a brilliant device. I love the uh, idea, the concept of the rehab as the frame story. Was that always yeah. the decision to structure that? That was there. Yeah, that was that was that was certainly part of the, the original script that I, that I read. Um, and that's something that developed more and more and more. And I I also, like you, loved that. You know, I. I it means that the film is not a biopic, it's a memory. It's a memory of someone that we're with. You know, it's you telling me your memory of your life. And, and that is subject to mistakes and exaggeration and uh, forgetfulness and, you know, ways of making it more alluring because it's now a story that you're recounting. And that opens the door for Rocket Man to be more fantastical, to have musical elements in it. It's felt like, it felt like everybody flew. You know, and we can we can show that in the film. Yeah, was there something surprising about him that you learned that you didn't think we didn't know or didn't think to know um, before working on it? How shy he is. Really? Yeah, you see this man on stage and his performances and his outfits and this extrovert and actually, you know, in real life he's quite a shy gentleman. Right. An introverted extrovert. Exactly. When someone said that, I was yes. like, Oh, that's such a weird dichotomy. Yeah, but there That's him. Maybe I should have tried to be more ordinary. He would never ordinary. I work so infrequently as an actor because I actually like cannot be in a situation where I'm not wildly enthusiastic about the movie right. because of these conversations. It would be impossible for me to be like, yeah, you know, right, I mean, it's right, like right. you have to love the movie.